Hey everybody, Guitar Guts here, and today I want to talk to you about an issue that may be causing dead strings on your bass guitar. Now this is nothing new, uh, this is nothing I've discovered. Um, I'm sure bass players and a lot of techs have known about this forever, um, but I did not know about this until I started playing bass a few years ago and ruined a set of strings before I uh, accidentally one day looked in one of the manufacturer's packages. Um, some companies that make uh, round core strings try to warn you about this issue. Uh, DR is the way I discovered it on the inside of their packaging. There's actually some information on how to prevent dead strings that I had never noticed before. I just kept throwing away the package without looking in it. But they have a really good explanation of what I'm about to show you here, uh, and it explains exactly how to uh, prevent it and what they've done to prevent it. Um, and they've even got a little graphic there showing you what I'm about to show you. Um, but I want to give you a little bit more detail and show you how to do it and why you need to do it. So first we need to talk about strings themselves. Um, and I'm going to try to illustrate that um, with something a little easier to see here. I've got a PVC pipe with uh, a bungee cord wrapped around it, and that's going to represent our guitar string. So bass guitar strings have an inner core on the inside, and that can either be usually hexagonal or uh, round core. And then they've got an outer wrap of string around that core that's wound on there super tight. Um, and all that's really good if those two things say, stay integrated together. If the core and the wrap stay where they were when the manufacturer put them together. The problem is on round core strings, um, more often than hex core, uh, that outer wrap can slip on the inner core. Now, if it's a he hexagonal core string, that hexagonal core has edges on it. And if you put a little bit of crimp in that, it's probably going to hold on to that outer wrap and not let it slip. But a round core, if you don't put enough crimp in it before you cut the string, that outer wrap can slip like this. It can open up, and that's what creates that dead string is that outer wrap coming loose from the inner core and sort of moving around on it. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to prevent. Um, <clears throat> we need to talk about tuners and um, measure something first before we get started on all this. So I'm just gonna use a little length of string that I've cut off something else uh, and we'll, we'll look at um, how to get started. Now, before you cut anything, before you do anything, you need to do a little bit of measurement. And this is before you start stringing anything, before you've cut anything. You can do it with an old uh, piece of a string. All you need is a measurement on this. And what I'm doing is um, I'm measuring the depth of the hole that's down in the tuner that the string goes down in. So this is the most common type of tuner. I know there's other types, but this is the most common type of tuner on bases and the string actually goes down in that post, right? Now, when you're making this measurement, be sure that you get the string um, completely down in that hole. Because sometimes there's a little bit of a ledge um, where the finish or something uh, is uh, on the side of the hole and that string's not actually going all the way down in there. So make sure it's getting all the way down in as far as it'll go. And then you're gonna pinch at the top of the post with your fingers and then take that back out. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit it on the ledge. This is outside of the hole, but still um, sort of down in the tuner, but not down in the hole. You're setting it on that ledge right there. And what you're doing is you're measuring the distance between the top of the tuner and your finger, from the top of the tuner to your fingers. That's how much string you need to go down in that tuning post, okay? And that's the measurement that you need. And what I usually do is I just take a, a piece of index card and I cut it to that size, right? So that's how much is going down in the tuner. That's how much I need to leave there, right? Um, and you can just ignore that end because that's, uh, your the bend is going to be right as it comes out of the hole not all the way to the top of the tuner. So you just need that distance right there. Now hang on to that because you're going to need that later, but we've not even started restringing yet. 
So when you're putting the strings on, um, you'll need to determine how long you need your string to be, and you'll have to watch another video on how to do that. You usually go about two posts or three posts past where you're wanting, uh, past the post that you're wanting the string in, and that's where you'd want to cut. But we're not gonna cut because we need to make a bend in it first. So the first, one, the first thing you do is you figure out how long you need that string to be. And let's say we need it to be this long right here, okay? Now, the diagram that's in the DR package makes it look like you can just come down toward the end of the string itself and make that crimp. But that's not always true, if you think about it, because some of those strings are way longer than you need them to be, like an E string on a fender bass. It's way longer than you need it to be, and if you just come down to the end of the string and make the crimp, you're going to have gobs and gobs of string wound around your post, and you don't want that. So figure out how long you need your string to be exactly. And if you need it to be uh, this long, that's where you need it to um, go down into the post. You are then going to back up from that. If this is the end of the string and down here is the ball end in your bridge, okay? If that's how long you needed the string to be, you're gonna back up the distance that we measured before, okay? And what you're gonna do at that point, don't cut. What you're gonna do at that point is you're gonna put a very sharp crimp in the string with a set of pliers, right? Just needle nose pliers. And you're gonna put a sharp 90 degree bend in that string, real heavy crimp, right? That needs to be drastic, right? 90 degrees, okay? Now you've got all this string down here Hopefully that crimp has prevented any of the outer wine from coming undone. But now you've got all this string down through here that you don't need, and that's where your little measurement card comes in again. You simply stick it like that, measure down the distance that you need to go down in the tuner, and then you're gonna take your set of snips and snip it off right there. Now you've got a string that is ready to go down in the tuner, it's got a good 90 degree crimp in it, so the wine's not gonna come loose and you will not have those dead strings again. So I hope that helps. I hope that keeps you from having dead strings on your base. Uh, and I appreciate you stopping by. Talk to you later.